gearbox kit came in, so I'm going to put it together, see how much torque it has, and get going on making the tail for the back of my robot that will help it get over the wall. Well, I haven't made a video in a while, so I've done a lot of stuff, and I have to apologize, but I'm probably going to have to jump around a lot to show the, all that I've done. First up is the uh, tail, which I finished. Uh, I replaced the clutch gear in the gearbox. I was going to glue it, but when I took it apart, I found that the clutch gear is exactly the same size as another gear that came in a kit as extra. So I swapped that out, and as you can see now, it can easily lift the weight of the robot. The next thing I did was I added this cover. Now, in the final one, I'll probably have plastic instead of paper, although paper is very lightweight, so I might just keep this. And I think that, despite the fact it's sort of bent right now, it sort of helps uh, cover a lot of the electronics and sort of just bring the design together so it looks like one uh, whole design. Whoa. Sorry. Um, the next thing that I am uh, that I have done is I've attached this claw that I made to um, the rotating platform. So I have this arm here that can go up and down, and obviously it rotates because it's connected to the platform. And because it has the two uh, the two bars, it stays relatively level as it goes up and as it goes down. It does tilt a little bit because these bars aren't exactly the equal length but it, the claw doesn't tilt too much when it goes down. And I've still got to uh, swap these cardboard pieces out for something that will actually cup the ball but I'll be doing that later. And uh, to fold the robot up I can bring this up and go all the way around and then uh, if it's about right like that it fits into the size requirements because this, uh, this arm is relatively long, it sticks out a little ways. And then the next thing that I have done is finish up my uh, camera display uh, setup. So I've yet to attach this camera, which is just, uh, I think I, have I showed you this guy? I don't think I've uh, made a video of this. This is just a $30 uh, wireless camera that I got on Amazon and it uh, works with this receiver which is 2.4 gigahertz so it won't interfere with anything and I can just adjust this uh, when the camera changes distance from the receiver to just keep a crisp image but I don't have to adjust it too much so in the contest I won't be fiddling with this knob all the time and it uh, is connected to the screen which is I, think I, believe, I believe it costs $22, and it is for a backup camera on a car. So I did have to walk around the house for quite a while to find a DC converter that actually converts to 12 volts. And um, eventually I did find it, because again, this is supposed to work with a car, so it didn't come with a power adapter that would just plug into the wall. But I found one that works with it, and I got it all wired up. All the wires are just tucked away in this box. And it's velcroed on, so if I want to um, walk around with the uh, screen as opposed to just have it on this box, I can probably add Velcro to my remote and just have it stuck on the remote. But for now, I think that I'm going to keep it on the box because I don't want to be uh, walking around with my remote dragging a wire connected to a large box, connected to another wire. It just probably would be a big hassle. So leaving it on a table and then walking over to the screen when I drive my robot into the cave is probably the best bet. And in addition to just the camera, I've got this fisheye lens and this was like, uh, it was really really cheap. This was two bucks I think. And it's for a cell phone camera so it just uh, uh, sticks right on and I'll show you the difference between with the fisheye lens and then without. So as you can see, you do get more in the frame. And here, if I can get rid of that, you might be able to see you can get even more. There you go. Um, so this doesn't warp the image too much and will let me get, uh, hopefully, the whole arm in the view of the camera when I drive the robot into the cave. 
Um, unfortunately, this is exactly 10 inches high at this point. So I'm not going to be able to mount the camera above the arm looking down, which would be the ideal position because the robot can only be 10 inches high. And it, the robot is allowed to unfold out of the size requirements after the contest starts. So at first I thought I would just have something that flipped up when the arm swung around. And then I'd be able to have the camera in a nice, uh, good position. But I realized that the cave entrance is also only 10 inches tall, so I can't have any unfolding thing. I'm really going to have to mount the camera probably somewhere along the side or something. I haven't yet decided, but it's going to need to be low enough that it fits the size requirements, yet still far enough back that I can see what I'm doing with the claw. So the contest is in uh, about five days, and pressure's on. We'll see what uh, I end up coming up with. Well, it is the day before the contest, and apart from a few odds and ends and some cosmetic touches, I think I am ready to compete. So I'll show you some of the minor things that I've done in this last uh, few days. Uh, one is I've mounted this camera, and uh, it's at an angle that I, where I can see the claw, yet I can still see things that are pretty far in the distance, um, and it gives me a good bearing of where I am. You may think that because it's on the rotating platform, um, I would have trouble driving because if the arm was like this, I wouldn't know where forward was in relationship to the actual robot. But that's not a problem because in the view of this, I can see the tip of this. So I'm always able to line the arm back up with that, with that tip, and then I know that it is uh, perfectly straight and I can... Uh, move the robot easily without worried, worrying about where the uh, arm is pointing. Um, I have uh, attached this little uh, LED light box. It is made from Christmas uh, light LED strands. Um, I just uh, ripped that apart. It was a burned out strand and I scavenged some LEDs. This is what it looks like when it's not lit. I did make two of them, but it turned out that I only need one, needed one. And uh, it's just packaged in a nice uh, box of PVC. So, it's fairly bright. I also have another LED shining down right here. And this helps um, in judging the distance of the ball from the claw. Because sometimes on the small screen, um, it's hard to know where exactly the ball is. But that LED shines on the ball when it's directly under it. So I know that I'm the right distance to pick up the ball. And uh, this claw has also been rimmed. A little bit of PVC, so let's see. Um, if I can do this with my hand, there we go. Um, this claw is both angled this way and uh, angled so that the widest part is in the front, which uh, helps roll the ball to the front. And this will make it a lot easier to drop it on the drop pylon because the ball will always be in the front. And I can very gently go like that and uh, precisely drop it. So it also has a rim on the top part to keep the ball from shaking out when I'm going over uh, rough stuff. And then I believe the last touch that I've made is this uh, double stick tape um, all around the wheels. This is actually more durable than you'd think. It is foam um, foam tape, but it is uh, it has pretty strong adhesive and I can just wipe it off and it's almost as sticky as new. So before each round I'll just wipe this off and it will help me get up the 45 degree incline. Uh, my robot was able to do that with just these rubber nubs, I was able to get up the incline, but it was very, um, I had to be very slow about it and very uh, careful not to go too fast because then it'd slide back down the slope. But this will hopefully grip right on and uh, help me get up that incline. So, yep, that is all that I have, and I think that I am ready for a very exciting National Robotics Challenge.